For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It is ridiculous for you to think that God is not a rewarder. Because he is a rewarder. The Bible says that he takes pleasure. It gives the Lord pleasure, good pleasure, to give us the keys to the kingdom. God is a rewarder. Regardless of what you have heard, regardless of what you have read, God is a rewarder. And he wants to reward you. It doesn't make any sense to me to to want to spend time with a God who doesn't believe in rewarding you. You know, you just live a horrible life because you love the Lord and it's all right that he doesn't reward you. That's asinine. That's, that's ridiculous. God is a rewarder. But now he has certain criteria on how to get a hold of the reward. And he mentions here that he will reward the diligent seeker. It's not just going to pour out rewards, uh, you know, for you not doing anything. But diligently seeking God. Somebody said, what about grace? Well, grace is when you get something that you don't deserve, but you get it anyhow. You got plenty of that. I mean, you saved. <laughs> and you didn't deserve that. But he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, we define that word diligent as steady or constant in, any, in the application of any business. A steady, constant in effort to accomplish what has been undertaken. Steady, constant in effort to accomplish what has been undertaken. Now just for a moment, I, I want to just kind of take you on a little journey to try to change your $2.50 idea of what heaven is. Now listen to me very carefully. I, I'm, I'm coming to the conclusion that God has got to be the reason for me living. In this atmosphere, on this planet Earth, it's so difficult to stay focused in on the fact that you've been put here by God to serve his purpose. It's easy for you to get distracted on your careers, on your schedules, but only what you do for Christ is going to last. Listen to me. When you get to heaven, how you did your your career, if it wasn't designated by God, won't mean a hill of beans in heaven. What you did in this life on a daily day, on a day-to-day -day basis, if it wasn't pertaining to the things of God, won't mean anything in heaven. All of what you have achieved and all of what you have accomplished, if it was not for the purpose of God, it won't mean anything in heaven. Now let me see if I can grasp your attention here for a moment in this earth and on this planet the only thing we really respond to is what we know right here now we know that we're in this physical body we know that there are people we know their ideals we know how the society operates we have a job we go to the job we get our check we pay our bills we go on a vacation, we raise our children, we get more ideas, we, we spend more time seeking the things of the world and very little time seeking the things of the word. Now, I, don't know if it, I don't know if it's ever hit you on your private time with the Lord, but I begin to think about it. And I begin to think about all of those who have gone on before me. I know that my family, that th those who were born again, I know that they are living a higher level of life than I'm living right now. 
those who were not born again, they're in hell. And I love them. And they are in hell. But those who are born again, they are living such an existence that they only wish that they could come and tell me how ridiculous we look when we're bawling and squalling at funerals. If they could just reach back through and say, shut up, I'm having a ball. <laughs> we, we don't understand. We don't understand that all of our focus has got to be heavenly. We, 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 we think that heaven is some type of uh, dream or some type of float yourself around for a minute type thing. But I want to remind you that all physical things and everything you know right now came from a realm, an unseen spiritual world that you're not familiar with. You're not familiar with the fact that in heaven there is a society. You're not familiar with the fact that in heaven, there, there are heavenly creatures, seraphims and, 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 and cherubims. You are not familiar in heaven that there are people in heaven. People in heaven. Now, you think of people as those who have physical bodies. This is just the house to give me authority in this physical world. In fact, it is not the spirit that looks like the body. It is the body that has taken on the duplication of the spirit. When I see you in heaven, your spirit man will resemble your physical man. I will see you and I will recognize you. Well, you reckon we'll know one another when we get to heaven? Well, you reckon we'll know one another when we get to Fort Worth? Now listen to me now. We think heaven is just getting on a cloud and floating around and steady won't no more. <laughs> Sipping on some tea. Cooling out forever. How many of you think that after a while that would get boring? I don't want to float on no cloud forever. Neither do I want to sip on tea forever. That's wrong. The, the, the whole thing is to restore us back to a point and then even past that point of where Adam and Eve were. Now Adam and Eve were at one time clothed in the glory of God. They, were, they wore the glorified body. Do you know that? They had on the glorified body. But that glory was lost when they sinned against God. Now, what was Adam doing? Adam had a job. Oh, I know y'all don't want to hear this, but you're going to work when you get to heaven. <laughs> you're going to work when you get to heaven. Each of us will have an assignment when we get to heaven. Now, the assignment in heaven is going to be determined by our faithfulness of what we did on this earth. I get to thinking about this and I say, Lord... It doesn't, everything else I do, outside of what you called me to do, doesn't matter. How I feel about everything else except what you called me to do, doesn't matter. All of the other things that I seek, that you haven't called me to seek, it doesn't matter. And I try to picture myself going on to heaven and standing before God. And I try to feel what I'm going to feel standing before God. Am I going to be ashamed? Because I, stu because I stand before the Lord knowing I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Oh, how am I going to feel standing there? I mean, all of my big concern was my business, my schedule, my career. I and I forgot all about doing what God told me to do. See, because there are some of you who are sitting on it. God's told you to do some things and you're making excuses for not doing it. And then there are some of you who are doing things that God didn't tell you to do and haven't had have to give an account to God for that. <laughs> I don't want to go to heaven and feel ashamed 
because I put more confidence and more focus on the world when he told me that I am not of this world and I put very little confidence and focus in the word. Now listen to what I'm saying. He said in the world you will have what? Tribulation. But in the word you will have what? Victory. Now he already told you. The world you're going to have trouble. The word you're going to have victory. And he's telling me seek my face. Seek my word. Seek my way. We get all drawn out because we want to seek it like the world seek it. See it like the world see it. And some of you Christians try to live that half and half life. You want to be saved, but then you want to do what the world do. You want to be saved, and then you want to say like the world says. You want to be saved, and you want to think like the world thinks. And carnality is not subject to the law of faith. In order for me to live pleasing in the sight of God, I've got to make my mind up that as a Christian, it is more to it than just come to church once a week. Do you know being a Christian means that I live beyond my church attendance? Me being a Christian, it's important to me that I'm saved when you don't see me. It's important to me that I'm not out to impress you more than I am out to impress God. Because if I get in, and try, get in to try to impress you, then most likely I'm not as in, you know, I'm not as, as, as I'm not doing a good job impressing God because I'm spending more, spending more time trying to pray. It's hard to impress human, black, and white beings. You understand? They put hard demands on you. Because if you try to impress people, they're going to tell you what they like and what they don't like. You try to impress people, then, you know, they may like this, they may like that. I mean, you don't do that. You get yourself in bondage. And, and what God's called us to do as Christians is, I've been born from the world into the word. My job now is to seek those things that are above and not those things that are of this world. Because when I get to heaven, the things that I sought from above are gonna be the only things that matter to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All this stuff you, you're dealing with now, when you, when you go to heaven, it ain't gonna be worth nothing. Yeah, but I gotta live. Live in his word. He knows you got to live, baby. <laughs> well, you know you got to pay bills. God knows you got bills to pay. But you insist on doing it your way. And you insist on taking the counsel of the ungodly, which is the world. And you won't let God have a chance on showing you how to live on a higher level of existence because you seek those things that you've learned in elementary school and in high school and in college and in, and in, and in, and in, in graduate work. You seek those things more than you seek the things of God. Ain't nothing worse than this world than an educated person. <laughs> Now, there's nothing wrong with an educated person. There's nothing wrong with an educated person. Please hear me. Oh, I'm not against education. But I am against education when you think education is the foundation and source for life. And it's not. Because I know a lot of educated people who are living horrible lives. But until they met Jesus and got in this word, this word gave them wisdom, and wisdom is the principal thing. Oh, I'm not against education. I'm against education that tries to tell you that it's all right for you to seek all of your education and not seek the word. Do you know when you get to heaven, all of the education that you've obtained won't matter to God one bit? 
Isn't that amazing? All of your PhDs, all of your promotions on your job, who you are in your company. Honey, if you're not in the company of God, it doesn't make any difference to God. It doesn't matter. I'm trying to bring you down off that cloud. I'm trying to show you that none of us are nothing without God. You're nothing. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing without God. Your life doesn't mean nothing without God. Your life is totally nothing without God. You got to have God. You got to seek the word. You got to want the word more than you want anything in your life. When will it come to that point where you look beyond this life? And it seems like it's so difficult. When are you going to come to the point where you, where you actually put yourself in heaven or in hell? When are you going to go beyond now? When are you going to be able to go beyond flesh? There's going to come a time where you're going to have to consider things beyond this world and beyond this flesh. So what if somebody didn't speak to you? Doesn't matter in heaven. Because Jesus didn't die so that somebody could speak to you. He died so you can get to heaven. So you can have life and have it more abundantly. See, what I am talking is more real than, than, than how we live. In fact, I sometimes wonder, I preached a sermon in college one time called, Is the Physical World Really Real? Because all of this physical stuff that I know came from spiritual stuff that I'm not really aware of. It was there before physical things. Yet, I want to turn the spiritual things into a $2.50 idea and make these physical things more than anything. And I can understand that because that's where we live and, and you know, that's what we understand and that's what we can comprehend and that's what we can take a hold of. But nobody wants to go beyond that point to recognize that one day you are not going to be in this physical world. And one day you will enter into a realm. You will enter into a heavenly realm. And you, when you enter in that realm, it will be as real as this world that you're living in right now. It will be as, in fact, it will be more real than where you're living right now. You're going to begin to see people. You're going to see spiritual things. You're going to be able to hold on spiritual things. You're going to be able to walk on spiritual things. You're going to be able to sit on spiritual things. We got we to gotta recognize that in heaven there is a society. There are neighborhoods in heaven. <laughs> there are dwelling places in heaven. I mean, what do you think? We're just going to just kind of all live outside? The, <laughs> just be together all the time? No, we're going to have family there. The Bible says that when you die and you go to heaven, that when you're born into that world, you're going to be gathered about your family. People that you knew in this world and folks you never got a chance to meet. You get a chance to meet great, 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 great papa. Isn't that awesome? You get a chance to meet people that your grandmother talked to you about. I'm glad they're there because a lot of us will go to heaven. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of us go to heaven. Not, first of all, you're going to be freaking out because you don't know what's up. And you're going to need family <laughs> to help you understand what's up. You're going to need some family. And they've been there. They know what's going on. They're going to break you in. They're going to show you how to do this and how to show, show you how to do that and everything. And you're going to be blown away when they say, hey, this is our house. Thank you for storing up in heavenly places. We have furniture because of you. Oh, you think we're going to stand for eternity? <laughs> My wife was walking around the house one day and she was looking kind of down. And I said, what's wrong with you? She said, do you believe Jesus is coming back soon? I said, oh, yeah, without a doubt. 
I said, I can almost pinpoint the time according to scripture. I said, but you know no man knows the time or the hour. She says, well, how come you ever never told nobody? I said, I ain't gonna get up like some idiot and tell somebody when Jesus is coming back. Let them think I'm some kind of fool. Uh -uh. <laughs> the Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour. But I, I believe I know about when the season gonna be here down to the, the year or two. And I, I'm getting ready and I'm going to tell you to get ready, but I wouldn't dare tell you. I don't think it's the will of God for us to preach that. I think it's the will of God for us to tell people to occupy till he comes. And, and I said, I believe he's coming back here. She got kind of sad. She said, I'm not going to see my baby get married. She said, if Jesus come back, then I'm not going to see my baby get married. I wanted to see my baby get married. I want to see her drive a car. I want to see, I want to have grandchildren. I want to see what her children going to look like. I don't want Jesus to come back right now. I, I said, don't say that, Taffy. Don't say that. You do want him to come back now. She said, well, if he come back now, then I, I, you know how, I, I don't want to leave you. I'm like, Taffy, shh, shh. I said, look, I choose you for eternity. Secondly, there will be family in heaven. I said, guess what, baby? If you want some more children, we can have them in heaven. <laughs> Why y'all didn't know that? You thought life as we know it is just, you know, <clears throat> stop. I must remind you, I must remind you that when Adam and Eve were clothed in the glory, they also produced children. You think they just, you think that all, this world just got, think about it. Some people think that the only people in the world were Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel. You kidding me? Amen. You kidding me, man? There was great, what was the first command God told them to do right after he created them? He said, be fruitful and Th that, that does confirm what I just said, doesn't it? Guess what they had on them? The glorified body. And in the glorified body, God told them to what? Be fruitful and what? There's going to be family in heaven. Somebody said, well, will we be able to have dinner time? <laughs> Listen, it's going to be much better in heaven. Some of you people have problems with calories down here and what it makes your, this physical body do. Watch this. <laughs> oh, apple pie in heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thanks, you, Jesus. Somebody said, how you know there's going to be apple pie in heaven? Because God know I like it. <laughs> now, you believe what you want to believe. I believe he's going to make sure apple pie in heaven for his baby. Now listen to me. Do you remember the first thing Jesus did when he was raised from the dead? He had on his glorified body too. The Bible says, Jesus walking in, the door being shut, which means he walked through it, sat down and ate fish and honeycomb. Well, if Jesus sat down and ate fish and honeycomb, how come I can't sit down and eat apple pie? <laughs> you see, you see your $2 idea of heaven just, right now, I am probably destroying your $2.50 idea of heaven. <laughs> we will have, we will be able to produce. We'll be able to reproduce in heaven. We'll, we'll, we'll have family in heaven. In fact, we'll have our entire extended family. There's some people in my family I miss so much. But I'm so glad that they're in heaven. And I know I'll see them again. But now watch this. We have houses in heaven. You remember what Jesus said, don't you? He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And where I am... You shall be there also. That in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. <laughs> 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 
there will be society in heaven. There will be government in heaven. The ruling class in heaven, watch this, there can, there are, there's only one class of folks who will be allowed to rule in heaven. Are you ready for this? I was going to preach this sermon on heaven later, but I might as well preach a little of it now and then I'll preach this sermon on diligence. There's only one class that can rule in heaven. According to the book of Revelations, guess who it is? The church. Only the church of Jesus Christ. Jesus will be the head and we will be his governing body. <laughs> the only difference in heaven is that the head will now come together with the body and we will have for the first time evident before all to see the entire body of the anointed ones. When you get to heaven, they will refer to you as the anointed ones. <laughs> Welcome the anointed ones. <laughs> The church is here. The church is here. Let all of heaven rejoice. The church is here. There will be a big program planned for us that day. As we walk down the streets of gold. As we enter into the throne room. Where we shall behold him. Face to face. No cloud. No body. We'll see him. Who sits on the throne. And then we'll look on his right side. And see our covenant brother. Jesus interceding for us. And then on his left, well, not quite when we get there on his left, Holy Ghost won't show up until later because he's still going to be here on the earth bringing more people to salvation. But the church will be in heaven. Now, when you get there and you see things and it looks real, when your family gives you your tour and you're like, whoa, man, look at this. What is this? That plant's moving. He says, you remember in the Bible in the earth when there was one plant where they put us a sword in front of it with flames so that you wouldn't eat of it? This is the tree of life. And once you partake of this tree, the state that you're in right now will be forever without any interruption of sin. Now righteous, you shall remain so with perfection once you partake of this fruit and you'll eat the fruit of the tree of life and you'll never have to worry about the solicitation of sin as long as you live for your consciousness will be restored back to total God consciousness without the consciousness of sin and you'll walk around and you'll see three things in heaven Number one, you'll see folks that you didn't think were going to get there, there. <laughs> Number two, you're going to see folks that you knew were going to be there, not there. And number three, you're going to look with amazement and see that you made it. <laughs> you're going to thank God that you showed up at church. You're going to thank God that you made your mind up to focus in on God. You're going to thank God that you decided to give up all these worldly things so that you could seek diligently the face of God. And then he'll give us our rank. Now I've already told you I'm working on the rank of general. I can't get it unless I show myself faithful here. See if I can't somehow or another figure out how to minister to the world now. If I can't figure out how to pastor a church 
and minister to the earth, then I'm not going to qualify for general status. But if I'll do the job that he told me to do, and all you're getting get understanding, then in that throne room, he'll say, Creflo Dollar, come forward, and I'll come forward. Not just me. <laughs> yeah. See, because we world changes, we're one. So you don't see that one is like you're going to see it when we get to heaven. He'll say, come forward and I'll step in here about a million footsteps move at the same time. And I look like, what's up, God? What's going on here? He said, oh, no, no, no. Not just you yourself, but these are the arms and the legs and the columns and the supports of what I called you to do. And now they all shall receive the rank. And like you changed the world while you were on planet Earth, I now, world changers, commission you to run this part of the kingdom over here. <laughs> oh, glory! <laughs> Woo! That's what it's about, man. And guess what the devil's trying to do? Trying to get you to focus all your attention on the things of this world. Your whole attitude need to be adjusted. Your whole thinking need to be adjusted. So you ain't got time to be trying to figure out if somebody next to you real. Well, you need to start looking at yourself and just figure out how many things you real concerning the things of God. You hypocrite, full of dead men bones, or come here on Sunday, look like you're saved. If I dared to bug your house, oh, the things I would hear. <laughs> we got to move. Got to change our mindset. This is not our home. We're just passing through. We're aliens in a strange world. Our home is in heaven. And then we'll have a chance to come back to this earth. Those of you who will end up being the army of God will follow Jesus back to this earth for the final finale, the final battle of all battles. The battle of Armageddon. The place has been set. The time has been set. The opponent has been set. And the Bible says that we will be in our glorified supernatural state. That Joel described it as men leaping over walls and not breaking their rank. And they said that, that, that even though spears shall go, go be, be thrust in them, it shall go through them and shall not harm them. Oh, boy. And they said when that battle is over with, the blood in that area of the Euphrates River Valley, somewhere in that area, will be up to the horse's bridle. And then the end shall come. And we shall all go in the millennium where we will celebrate the marriage. We'll have to go because the earth will be completely destroyed. The heavens will be completely destroyed. And there will be a new earth and a new heaven. Glory to God. A new earth and a new heaven. And for the first time, Heaven will come together on earth and we will have access to both heaven and earth at the same time. And we won't need the sun. We won't need a star because the star will be with us in all of his glory, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, science is finally trying to catch up with the Bible. They have scientific evidence now that prayer works. <laughs> now, they don't know who to pray to yet, but they know that prayer works. They did an experiment. 
Well, they took people, patients in the hospital, that unknowingly uh, knew that anybody was playing, praying for. Those that received prayer made better improvements than those who did not receive prayer. They also used the evidence over bacteria. They prayed over bacteria, and they didn't pray over bacteria. Scientists arguing the fact that prayer, us are unsaved, uncircumcised, <laughs> Philistine, <laughs> trying to convince people that prayer works. He said it with his mouth, prayer changes things. <laughs> and he doesn't even believe in the Bible and use a scripture to prove his point. <laughs> and you're trying to tell me God's out of control. God is in control. And then, and then science is, is also recognizing that the earth is, the earth won't, they, they declare that the earth is destroying it. it, it won't be able to stand it. They see the ozone layer is disappearing, saying the rays on the sun are hitting the earth like never before, which is now going to be, as we progress, we'll start causing more problems in our ecological system. It'll mess some things up. It's already started that. I heard a report on frogs not being able to live because of something missing in the atmosphere that uh, not causing them to live right. They've also discovered in physical science that the sun is enlarging, which in the process of dying, a star goes through that stage of enlarging before it completely burns out. They even had a couple of signs. I, I don't. I, I forgot the area. I don't know if it was Tibet, but they were doing some studies on sounds on the earth, and they dug real deep. I mean, very, very deep into the earth's core, and they put a super microphone down there, and they heard human voices screaming. This is documented information. In fact, it was so terrifying to those scientists that over half of the team packed up and left immediately. <laughs> they heard what they described. They described they heard horror and gnashing of teeth. Isn't it interesting that the Bible says that hell is in the center core of planet Earth? A spiritual place, yet physically, sounds could be picked up by scientists. Now, scientists don't walk by faith. They only walk by evidence. <laughs> and the evidence was so strong that they left that site that day, never to return. What is it going to take before you and I will take seriously that it's time to seek the Lord. What is it go what's going to have to happen before we'll recognize that planet Earth and this world and your daily activity is not the only thing that it is to life. That you and your job and your career, that's not it. But it's about Jesus. And everything I do, it must be for Christ because only what you do for Christ will last. They that diligently seek me, I shall reward. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, now notice how we do it, according to his promise, we look for a new, we look for new heavens, and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, since you looking for new heavens and a new earth, new heavens and new earth means not the old one. 
but not the same one. It's not new if the same one. Somebody said, God going to renovate earth. No, he going to get a new one. God going to start all over again. Let there be light. While we're in the millennium, he's going to be down here. Let there be a firmament in the midst of a firmament. <laughs> he said, now since you're looking for this, wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Now, those of you who will die and say, I didn't know, God will say to you, why I allowed my servant to tell you exactly what it was going to be like and you didn't pay attention. 